little bit backwards from the way I usually do them. I'm going to open up for announcements first. So, and then I'm going to make an announcement. Miss Mine. Okay. Um, I would just like to say, if you don't have your ticket for Miss Big Gospel yet, if you give me $15 today, I'll set you up. Your ticket will be at the door for whichever concert. Or you can go online, or you can buy them at the door. They'll be $20 at the door. Thank well, let you. Me know Next weekend. Next weekend. Next weekend. <laughs> Any other announcements? Okay, then I have an announcement to make. And if you guys would, the people that were here for the meditation, I'd like you to call in your inner resource right now. And for those of you that weren't here for the meditation, your inner resource is simply a place that your system and its wisdom has created for you. <coughs> Indoors, outdoors, someplace comfortable, a place of memory, a place of imagination where you feel safe, secure, at home and at peace. Because that's the mindset that I would like you to be in. Reverend Ed is unable to come any longer. We thought that he was going to be able to, and he wanted to, be able to uh, help us through the transition of finding a new minister. He is unable to come because of his doctor's orders. Mm -hmm. So it is not because he does not want to be here. It is because his doctor felt that this was what was in his best interest. Mm -hmm. I also know that there's questions wondering naturally uh, what's going on with his health and what I'm gonna ask is that we respect his privacy. Mm -hmm. Reverend Ed is a very dignified private person, and so I know that all of us wish him only the best. Mm -hmm. Yes. He is going to be coming for a celebration. We have set a date. He is going to be coming the first week of April. Yeah. Reverend Carlos has so generously offered to um, lead the service that day, and so we are going to start thinking about ways that we can honor him trying to gather some pictures, having a book. What I'd like to do is have a book where we can write remembrances and not do it the day of. Mm -hmm. We're kind of scrambling. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start sitting with that, let it be a seed that you plant in your inner resource now so that we're able to really tell him from the fullness of our hearts what he's meant to us, perhaps what he's taught us. He's meant a great deal to me personally, and I know that uh, you guys feel the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, on that note, we are having a guest minister next week who was the first person that Reverend Ed recommended that we look into. Um, his name is Reverend Steve Coudre. I actually spoke with him again this morning. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do, as I've said before, is the board has decided we're going to invite speakers and get to know them, they get to know us. It's a hello, it's a how you doing, it's a what's your vibe, and do you vibe with us? And as my sister Karen, who is always so brilliant, said to me, Jennifer, we are very desirable. Those were her words, I was sitting in front of the, <laughs> I, was in front of, I was in front of the Town Line Hardware Store, and she said, don't you worry about that. We are so desirable. <laughs> and we are. We are. We, we are. are an amazing community. We are. That which we are, which we are seeking, which we are seeking, is seeking us. And so the other thing I want you to plant in this inner resource, in this fertile ground that we've created, is what it is that we envision for our minister, one of our ministers. <laughs> right. We already got one locked up. <laughs> um, and the board has talked about this extensively. We had a really lovely, uh, it was almost an hour and a half, and it was on Valentine's night. My husband was not happy. <laughs> I know for a fact that Karen's was not either. I can't speak for you. I didn't think when I set the date for all this. Yeah, I didn't mind at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. like, she, believes, she believes every day should be Valentine's. Right, okay. <laughs> Hallmark holiday. My husband was like, really? We can't go right. to dinner because you're on the phone? <laughs> Anthony heard about it from Keith the next morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, 
That being said, uh, one of the things that we talked about was, I'm gonna throw out a couple words, is somebody who understands that we are a unity church, but we are also trans-denominational. Mm -hmm. We are welcoming to all, and to all that does not, that includes race, creed, sexual orientation, where you're at on your path, <coughs> where you've been, where you think you're going. We don't care if you vibe with us. If you are a seeker, if your heart is open, if you are searching for wisdom that is within, Teach. that's what we want. Right. Mm -hmm. And we want a person right that vibrates that with us. Mm -hmm. So I think that that word is a word that is important that I want to drop mm -hmm. in. I want you guys to search for words. And somebody who did a lot of searching and who does a morning practice where he does writing papers is Mr. Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Raleigh gave us a teaching during the middle of this um, uh, board meeting that we had. And he came out, and what it, it almost became like spoken word poetry. All right. And so, um, Raleigh, would you like to yes. oh, yeah, take God. it away? Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> Do I actually need this microphone? Can I do this? <laughs> Micro yeah, microphone free? It's okay. Yeah, put it Whatever you want. I'm going to do it microphone free. I have no idea what I'm doing with that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, as Jennifer said, uh, uh, someone she's been speaking to has been, been, been giving counsel to us on this process, uh, uh, said that uh, what you're seeking is seeking you. And um, so, uh, so as I was doing my morning notes one morning on the 13th, the day before our board call, I, among other things, wrote down, sort of wrote a little bit and then kind of got off into this jag about what it is that we're, we are seeking in a new minister and so I wrote what makes unity in the city unique? Yes, we are a unity church. Every prospective minister will know and understand that. Uh, they need to understand that and together with it, like a double helix, the essence of what makes us different, our vibe, soulful, expressive, deep, elevating, inspiring, learning and growing every week. Not complacent, not victims, not blaming. Seeking, a community of seekers. What you are seeking is seeking you. What are we seeking? We are seeking a minister who will inspire us and help us release and let go of the limiting thoughts and beliefs that inevitably creep into our lives. We are seeking a minister whose presence and words resonate with us, individually and as a congregation. We are seeking a minister whose presence uh, and words captivate us and command our respect. We are seeking a minister whose presence and words leave us with a sense of both lightness and gravitas. We are seeking a minister who has a sense of humor Mm -hmm. who is dead serious about metaphysics, but who does not take themselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. We are seeking a minister who is simultaneously confident and humble. Mm -hmm. We are seeking a minister who will fall in love with our church writ large and with our congregation and with whom we will individually and collectively fall in love. We are seeking a minister who is creative, not doctrinaire, and who helps bring forth our own unique capacity to pray. Um, we are seeking a minister who lives a life guided by the five unity principles and who encourages us to do the same. We are seeking a minister who pulls and doesn't push, who brings out faith, not fear. We are seeking a minister who shows us the way rather than telling us what to do. We are seeking a minister whose approach is centered on principles, not rules. We are seeking a minister whose words 
in sermons and in conversation, rise above sense perception and sense-based judgments, especially those tied to hot-button issues like current events and politics, and who always seeks to bring us back to the principle of righteous judgment. We are seeking a minister who has a deep understanding of the history of unity. We are seeking a minister who has a rich, principle-centered understanding of the Bible in the spirit of Charles and Merle Fillmore, and more recently of Eric Butterworth, and whose loving embrace of spiritual principles is trans-denominational, that sees that all the faith traditions have at, at their heart the same thing as we do, who is both in harmony with and a counterpoint, uh, a distinctive complement to our esteemed uh, minister, uh, Reverend Carlos Wayne Anderson. For all of these qualities we seek and more, it's hard to know on paper or on the phone. As they say, we'll know it when we experience it, or we'll know it when the experience moves us. I feel the spirit moving in me. I feel the joy. I feel the, the peace. I feel the love. We're seeking a minister who is filled with spirit, peace, joy, and love uh, 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 by our wonderful music ministry. Uh, we intend to be patient and to let this process unfold in divine order. We know that we do not know how the process will unfold. It may be uh, fast, or it may be slow, or it may be somewhere in between. We will not attempt to make it fit any predefined schedule. We are seeking a minister who considers themselves to be a student as well as a teacher, a minister for whom the process of learning and growth, that is of spiritual discovery, is never ending. We are seeking a minister who will encourage each of us to engage in a never-ending process of learning and growth. We are seeking a minister who understands that all knowledge is self-knowledge and that all discovery is self-discovery. That the unity principles, while universal, speak to each of us in ways that are specific to our own unique hearts, souls, strengths, and minds. That is, to our own life experience, consciousness, ingrained beliefs, habits of mind, and subconscious or unconscious processes. We are seeking a minister who tells stories that help each of us see things from a new and different perspective in the process helping us move away from darkness and closer to the light, which is our divine inheritance. So now you guys have your assignments. Let that resonate with you. See what you want to add. See what you maybe want to rephrase for you. <clears throat> right? Each of us individually is going to call forth what this church is. We're doing it right now. Be very proud of us. Uh, I would like to close with John Pippa, please, doing the Daily Word. All right. Okay. The Daily Word for Sunday, February 24th, 2019, is perfect guidance. guidance. Perfect for this community right now. <laughs> I have faith that I am divinely guided. Today, I consider the path that has brought me to this moment. Looking back at past situations, I now see that seemingly insurmountable obstacles held rich new opportunities to allow my Christ self to guide my every choice. Divine guidance is never withheld 
and is more rewarding than any scenarios my mortal mind may envision. Just as I encourage others to actively seek enlightenment from their inner source, I continue, I remind myself to do the same. Spiritual guidance is readily available to me and to all creation through a divine connection. Through spirit within, my perspective changes and possibilities become reality. And the, uh, the affirmation again is, I have faith that I am divinely guided. And it's uh, the biblical reference is Psalm 22, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Right. It's like magic how that happens, yeah. isn't it? Right. I love synchronicity. That's perfect. Thank you, John. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So just a reminder, next week, Reverend Poudre. Also, I want to announce he's going to be doing a what he calls a listening circle after lunch. And it's a process of deep listening. It's a process of looking for wisdom within. Um, and he's very, he's really, the way that he speaks reminds me it vibes very beautifully with us. It's a mystical uh, perspective, which is all wisdom is within. And so he uses this listening circle as his personal um, pathway to help uh, join with others on the same path. On that, I would like to welcome Reverend Perlis. <laughs> 